Hello and welcome to Popcorn Mumbles, the podcast where we dig into the back catalog to select a film or television show to rewatch. I'm your host, Cody Nestor. Alongside of me is my co-host, Todd Hill. Hey guys, what's up? Today we are joined again by our special guest, Lexi Valentine. Hey y'all. Uh, just a reminder, the video version of today's episode is available on YouTube. If you enjoy the show, please consider following us on your podcast platform of choice and subscribing to our YouTube channel. This week, we've selected the 1998 film Halloween H2O, 20 Years Later. Can you believe it's only been 20 years since 1978, Todd? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Two decades after surviving a massacre on October 31st, 1978, former babysitter Lori Strode, played by Jamie Lee Curtis, finds herself hunted by persistent knife wielder Michael Myers. Lori now lives in Northern California under an assumed name where she works as the headmistress of a private school, but it's not far enough to escape Myers, who soon discovers her whereabouts. As Halloween descends upon Lori's peaceful community, a feeling of dread weighs upon her with good reason. Halloween H2O was released on August 5th, 1998. On a budget of $17 million, it made $55 million. It has a Rotten Tomatoes score of 54% and an audience score of 49%. So, guys, let's discuss Halloween H2O. Spoilers are ahead. So, Todd, to start, tell us where Halloween H2O fits in among the previous installments of this franchise. So, the director and the minds that be at the time wanted this to kind of retcon 4, 5, and 6, and they wanted it to be 78, uh, Halloween 2, and then H2O. Yeah, so we're direct sequel, basically, to 81's Halloween 2, knowing all that Jamie Lloyd story, the previous installments, all the... Thorn stuff. Oh, yeah, all the the Thorn trilogy, as people call it. Um, It's just about post-traumatic Lori Strode after she kind of fakes her own death. She goes into hiding after the events of, basically, Halloween uh, 2. Uh, So walk us through the opening of the film, Todd. So, first off, we get a nice little Halloween scene in a neighborhood. You know, a lot of people trick-or-treating, carving jack-o'-lanterns. I like that kind of shit in my Halloween <laughs> Right. <laughs> uh, we get Nurse Marion returning to her house. Uh, she realizes it's been broken into, kind of burglarized. Mm-hmm. Uh, she kind of goes... She's been burgled. To, yeah, she got burgled. <laughs> uh, she goes uh, looking around for some help and runs into a couple of teens. Uh, they call the cops for her. Uh, they agree to go she back... She runs into Robin. That's right. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Who knew she had a superhero right there with her? Yeah, hey. One of the teens, uh, one of the teams is named Jimmy, uh, played by Joseph Gordon Levitt. So right. that's, that's why I say Robin. So they agree to go back to her place and uh, Robin. Uh, he <laughs> Sorry. Goes, he goes in to check the place out for her, uh, steals a couple of beers off of her, gets a little spooked, and trashes her kitchen. Yeah, uh, then he he's come, less Robin in this, he's more Casey Jones because he's, yeah. he's a hockey guy. That's right. He's got, he's got, a, his he's hockey got a hockey stuff. stick. Yeah. So they come. He comes out and tells her he didn't see anything. They go on back to their place, and uh, she goes on back in. And uh, they did tell her that her office had been burglarized, or not burglarized, but kind of misheveled, destroyed, and of course her kitchen because he fucked it up. And then she kind of realizes that the stuff that kind of got rifled through was old files about the Myers Strode case. Uh, she kind of sees her back door flung open, gets spooked. Uh, she goes back to find the teens at their house and. Uh, Finds uh, one with an ice skate right through his head. Jimmy, Jimmy JGL, Robin. Yep, yep. <laughs> He's got an ice skate stuck in his uh, his head. It's killed off screen. Yeah. The other one is kind of just standing there waiting for it to show up before he falls over. Yeah, Tony. Uh, <laughs> his, name, his other friend's name, Tony. He was stabbed, and uh, he's still somehow standing up. And then Michael shows up and just slits her throat. Uh, was it... I, I didn't pay enough attention to it. Was it her house, or was it Loomis's house? I believe, yeah, I mean, because she's the care. He's she's like his living nurse at this point. Yeah, so technically, he's it was, passed away. Yeah, it was her house. That was my mistake. It was uh, his house. I'm sorry. She was just like a kind of caretaker for him at and, that point. And the Michael broke in. I guess not only to he was looking for. He the was file. probably looking for him, but he had already. It's died. all of Loomis's files. He's probably looking yeah. for Loomis, but he finds all of Loomis's files and looking about what happened to, to Lori and uh, those kind of things. Yeah, my bad, Cass. No, no, you're fine. <laughs> I just I couldn't remember honestly. I didn't pay enough attention. Um, but like I said, we got Joseph Gordon Levitt. He plays Jimmy. Uh, some other people that show up. Uh, Bo Billingsley uh, for a scene. He plays a cop. Uh, he's like. Uh, uh, one of the detectives that shows up after, you know, Marion gets murdered. I think his name is Fitz. Uh, you not seen again in the film after the opening scene. <laughs> um, 
there it, during the opening credits you get a voiceover of Dr. Loomis. It's not Donald Pleasance. It's actually uh, voice actor Tom Kane. Don't know if you guys are familiar with him, but probably the, he's most known for. He, he's got so many credits. He's done so many voice roles. Uh, but he is the narrator and uh, voice of Yoda in Star Wars: The Clone Wars. Oh, okay. Yeah. He does a little, like, Dr. Loomis impression voiceover of, like, you know, I was with him for 15 years and all I saw was the dark in his eyes and he's a murderer. I'll never let him out. The good you know? stuff. Yeah, that kind of stuff. The good stuff. Um, so, Lexi, uh, we talked about it a little bit in my opening, but uh, tell us what Lori's been up to since 1978. Uh, she has relocated to California. Uh, she has changed her name to Carrie Tate. Carrie Tate. Is that yeah. a reference to anything, by the way? I didn't look that up. It feels like it's like, is it Sharon Tate? I don't know. Just, I'm reaching, but. I don't remember what her mom's name was in Psycho, but I don't think that was it, and I may be wrong. Anyway, sorry, Lexi. Anyway, uh, she has had a kid, um, a son named John, mm -hmm. and she is now the headmistress of Hillcrest Academy High School. Yeah, so it's like a private boarding school. Uh, she's got uh, a secretary, uh, Norma Watson. Uh, she's got a guidance counselor boyfriend, Will Brennan. Um She's got a normal life, so to speak, but she's definitely haunted by what kind of happened to her 20 years ago with Michael and the babysitter murders and all that kind of stuff. She's almost becoming like a full-blown alcoholic that we kind of mm -hmm. see throughout the film. Uh, so a little bit more about our cast. You mentioned that Lori has a son now, John. He's played by Josh Hartnett, uh, his first film role. Uh, he gets an introducing Josh Hartnett credit in the film. Uh, Adam Arkin, uh, Chicago Hope alum. Um, plays Will Brennan, uh, Lori's boyfriend. He's the guidance counselor. Uh, young Michelle Williams plays Molly. Gotcha. You know Michelle Williams, Lexi? Um, you know Dawson's Creek? I don't want to wait. <laughs> I'm sorry. sorry. I've heard of the show, but she's I've never John's girlfriend. It. She was uh, she's you know she was uh, <laughs> on Dawson's Creek. She was also Heath Ledger's wife in oh. real life. Um, Lexi's like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> uh, anyway, moving on. Moving on. <laughs> Um, Adam, I think it's Adam Hanbird or Hanbird. I'm not sure. Sorry if I'm butchering that. He plays Charlie, John's best friend. He's like the horny best friend character. Gotcha. Always wants to get laid kind of guy. Same. Uh, if his face looked familiar to anybody, oh, <laughs> just got that. Uh, if his face looks familiar to anybody, he played young Alan Parrish in the first Jumanji movie. Oh. Uh, we also have Jody Lynn O'Keefe, who plays Sarah, Charlie's girlfriend. And, of course, we've got LL Cool J, because it's the 90s. Oh, yeah. And he plays Ronnie, the security guard, and also uh, an aspiring smut writer. Yeah. What would you call <laughs> Dirty novel writer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Harlequin romance. <laughs> exactly. Uh, and we have one more cast member that kind of pops up a couple times in the film. Uh, any idea who I'm referring to here, Todd? Uh, I think you're thinking of Janet Lee. Yeah. Uh, she played uh, Laurie's secretary and course in real life that's uh, jamie lee curtis's mother yep so uh, famously she played the uh, the uh not the main protagonist but she played i can't i can't remember her character's name from psycho people are going to question our credentials here uh but she is the first person that we see killed on screen in psycho in the famous bathroom you know the shower scene <laughs> yeah uh, she's also, like Todd said, Jamie Lee Curtis's mother. Uh, one little behind the scenes thing you kind of see in the film that she is driving a 1957 Ford. That is the same kind of car that she drove and was buried in in Psycho. Oh. Uh, so Todd, uh, since bearing an ice skate in, uh, JGL's forehead, <laughs> uh, what has Michael been up to? Uh, he stole a car and he's headed out West looking for Laurie, uh, of course, he's had a little bit of car trouble. He's had a flat right there near a roadside rest stop. But uh, fortunately for him, my mom and her daughter stopped by to use the potty. And uh, Michael uh, kind of steals the lady's purse. It's got her keys in it and proceeds to steal her janky-ass-looking car. It looks like what that monster in uh, Jeepers, Jeepers Creepers rode Creepers. around in. I don't know what the fuck that, a scat V8, I don't know what that thing was. But hey, he yeah. drove off in it. She couldn't have been driving a Hyundai or a, a Toyota Corolla or no. something. She's in like the, this old jalopy. Looks like something Herman Munster would drive around. She got around that in. Jeepers Creeper special. Yeah, That's what I it guess was. So. That's what it looked like to me. Yeah, but surprisingly enough, he let the mom and the kid live. He yeah. just, just stole the car. You you uh, got to my next question. So my question. So uh, would your version of Michael Myers in your head would he would he kill the mom? Would he kill the mom and the little girl? Or neither, as we see in this film, Todd. I don't know. Um, trust me, my memory ain't the best <laughs> anymore, but I don't think he's ever killed a kid kid. 
He did in 2018. That's right. You're right. He killed the skater or the kid that wanted to skate. He didn't ah. kill the baby in 2018, but he did kill, kill like a 12 year old. Oh yeah, kind of that's kid right. In 2018. So yeah. I stand corrected. I I think he probably would have iced the mom back in that day, but probably not the kid. Lexi, I agree. Just yeah. the mom, not the kid. Yeah. Yeah. For me, I want to. it's Mike. We got to take one of them. He, it's too. Again, it goes back to the idea, like, for me, my best version of Michael Myers, he's a shark. He's pointing in one direction, whatever in his way. He's going to kill. Mm-hmm. I don't think he would have just, like, ooh, let me take this hand, baby. I'm out. That's like, <laughs> just weird to see him not, is. like, He's, like, kind of skulking around, like, I mean, he's He just Michael. turned around, like. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, bitch, I'm taking you jalopy. <laughs> but, yeah, I don't know. I just think he would have, like, killed the mom at least and yeah. left the traumatized little girl. Give me something. This movie, that's the problem with this movie. At least what? take her for a ride or something. Like, hey, what, kind, what kind of ride? <laughs> like, what kind of ride are we talking about here? <laughs> but, like, that's the problem with this film is they're like, you don't get enough kills. Like, there's, we'll talk about it a little bit later, but you're kind of lacking for kills in this film. True, yeah. true. Uh, you know, again, for the record, I think, for me, my version of Double M at least kills the mom, if not both of them. Yeah. Um, so back at the academy, we see that uh, most of the faculty and students, they're preparing for like a trip to Yosemite. Uh, Lori, she's kind of overprotective of her son, her son, John. She's kind of forbidden him to go anywhere. She's afraid something's going to happen to him. Super like, you know, overprotective mom kind of stuff. Um, so John's girlfriend, Molly, she also can't go. Uh, so the little foursome there, John, Molly, Charlie, uh, see, uh, Sarah, let's say Sarah, whatever the, the his, Charlie's girlfriend's name is. Uh, they all decide, well, while everybody else is gone, we're going to have free run of the school. We're going to have our own little Halloween party, you know, orgy, yeah. <laughs> whatever, whatever thing here at the school. So once uh, most of the teachers have departed, uh, you see Ronnie, who's a little cool J, he kind of helps John and Charlie kind of sneak out of school because they want to go and get like, liquor and stuff and like stuff for the party and like you have a little scene on the on the like main street of that town with Lori and Will and she's kind of like hinting at she's got a a tragic backstory but she doesn't quite tell him and she like downs a champagne (laughs) glass you know a champagne flute of wine while he's in the bathroom and gets another one so he doesn't know that she's a drunk and all this kind of stuff just a little setup to her character and then she sees John and busts him, and of course, like, you know, kind of derides him for being out on the street and that kind of thing. But really, we go back to the school. We kind of cut forward to that that night, and then the old Jeepers Creepers mobile pulls up to the front <laughs> gate, and oh, just the scene is so dumb to me with L.O. Cool J, and he's just like, He's looking everywhere. Michael's not. I mean, I, it's a trope. I get it, but like. He goes outside the gate, why, leaves it open. Leaves the gate he? open. Yeah, why? It, I see that vehicle pull up anywhere. It pulls up in my driveway. It pulls up at Walmart. (laughs) I'm sus about it. Right. Yeah. Like it had been a normal car, maybe, but that shit mobile, nah. No, exactly. (laughs) So I mean, he's just completely oblivious, and so you see Michael just kind of sneak onto school property, and it's just kind of an eye rolling little scene. So let let, let's talk about the problem with the kill. So Michael Myers only kills six people in this entire film. Uh, So I'm going to ask you both to give me your best kill your most meh kill, and your worst kill. So let me, let me recap the kills for you here. So there's six kills in total. So you got Jimmy, which is uh, JGL's friend. Uh, oh, no, Jimmy is JGL, sorry. He's found with the ice skate in his head, killed off screen. Uh, Tony, found with a knife in his back, standing up like Todd mentioned, uh, killed off screen. Marion Chambers, her throat was slit with a kitchen knife. Uh, Charlie, the horny best friend, uh, from what I understand, we don't, he's another off screen death. His throat was slit with a corkscrew, I think. Um, Sarah, which is Charlie's, uh, girlfriend, she gets her leg snapped. Uh, she stabbed at least four times in the back and then she gets, kind of gets hung up from the light fixture in the pantry, I guess. And then we have, uh, Lori's boyfriend, school counselor, Will Brennan. He's stabbed in the back and kind of lifted off the ground. So Lexi, we'll start with you here. Give me your best kill. Uh, the best kill for me would probably be Will Brennan, uh, who was stabbed in the back and then lifted. Okay. Uh, yeah. What about the most meh kill? Um, probably Sarah. That's the snap, a leg snap, stabbed yeah. in the back, put on the light fixture? Yes. Okay. And worst kill? Uh, Tony, who was found with a knife in the back standing up. That's just, just waiting to be found, yeah. right? Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Doesn't, doesn't <laughs> work. Uh, Todd, give me your best kill. 
Uh, my best kill is Sarah. I love that snapped, mangled leg, uh, the stabbings, and then getting strung up in the pantry. Uh, most mad kill? Uh, for me, it's Brennan. Uh, that uh, stab in the back, lift up off the ground. Uh, that was done a lot better in Halloween, too, with that nurse. Oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> uh, worst kill? Uh, me and Alexi is in agreement here. It was Tony, the second teenager, who killed off screen, stabbed in the back, managed to stand up the whole time until she gets there, then he falls over. Right. <laughs> so uh, I'm pretty, Todd, we're pretty in sync except for one. So I gave best kill to Sarah just because the most things happened to her. She got her leg snapped in the dumb waiter. She got stabbed a bunch. Then he, str- uh, he strung her up, which is like that's it, – it, it's a it's a problem with the 2018 Halloween, even though we're not talking about that. But it's one of those things like where Michael Myers hangs around to pose a body. Yeah. He does that a lot in 2018's Halloween, <laughs> where he puts the flashlight in the cop's mouth, the decapitated yeah. head. But he he takes he takes pride in his work sometimes. Mm-hmm. Like oh, I'm going to string this girl up from the light fixture. So, <laughs> He's so when the cute sometimes. yeah exactly <laughs> exactly. So when the other two find her, they're really going to shit themselves. Yeah. But Sarah uh, is my my best kill. My most mad kill. I agree with Todd. Is, is Wheel. Um, and then my worst kill is, I think it's Charlie because like, he's more of a central character and you get like a completely, he he gets killed completely off screen and it just, everything about it. Like you don't see anything happen to him. You just see his body in the dumb waiter later, but like, he's like that horny friend that you just want to see get murdered and like no satisfying death for him at all. So that's my, that's my uh, worst kill. Yeah. And he's also in that scene where the mask is CGI'd on. Yes. Gosh, that's that's gosh true. Almighty. That's true. More to come later. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and again, of the six people, old double M kills, three happen off screen. So you get three on screen kills by Michael in this film. Damn, that's weak. It is. I mean, literally if I saw this film come out today, I think it would be ready PG 13. Yeah. True. Yeah, I mean, it's not. A, I don't know why it has an R rating. I don't know how, why it has an R rating for 1998, but it definitely is not an R for 2023. Uh, so let's move on toward the ending of the film. So old Double M attacks John and Molly. Uh, the two barely manage to escape. They're rescued by Lori. She comes face to face with Michael at that door for the first time in 20 years. That's one of the few good things. That that kind of reaction and kind of seeing him, even though I don't like the look of Michael, which we'll get into. Um, that is one of the, the better moments that the film has. Um, they uh, go around, her and Will go around. Will accidentally shoots Ronnie, a little cool J, in the head. Uh, he mistakes him for the shadow of Michael Myers coming around the corner, so he shoots him. As Lori's kind of checking Ronnie's body, that's when we get Michael emerging and uh, gives Will the old stab in the back and the lift off the ground. Adam Arkin sold that baby, didn't he? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the trio of Lori, John, and Molly, they make a run for Lori's truck. They drive off towards the main gate of the school. Uh, and you know, Lori knows Michael's never going to stop. So she tells them to go on, get help, locks the gate behind them. I think she even destroys the gate control. I think behind them, she goes and arms herself with an ax and heads back up to the campus to kind of, you know, confront Michael and put an end to things once and for all. So here's another uh, question for you guys. So in both, this film, H2O, and in Halloween 2018, Lori ends up hunting Michael, right? Mm-hmm. So which depiction of Lori do you prefer, Todd? How she's depicted in H2O, kind of as, you know, traumatized, but, you know, kind of an alcoholic, but she's not depicted the same as we see her in Halloween 18, 2018. So is it H2O or the Halloween 2018 depiction that you like best? You know, I honestly think they're both really good uh, renditions of her on their own merits, but I think my personal favorite is 2018, where she's just kind of that homebound security freak hermit that's got like a strained at best relationship with her whole family. I think that's my favorite. Yeah. yeah. Lexi, what about you? I completely agree. I prefer the 2018 Lori. Yeah, I mean, in, in both films, she still has a family. She still had a, a child in both films, and um, but like I like that depiction in 2018 better that she's just obsessed with Michael. In, in H2O, she just wants to kind of move on and forget it, but she can't. But in 2018, she actively like she, she I think she says in that movie to uh, the sheriff, she's like, you know, I prayed every day for you know 40 years that he would get out so I can kill him. And like I, I love that depiction compared to what we get here. But I agree with Todd, it's not terrible. But of the two, I just wanted to see which one you guys preferred. Yeah, I do like how, you know, in 2018 she does have, you know, that home security. You know, she has that little yeah uh, 
She's got what that safe room yeah. underneath the kitchen yeah. island thing. Yeah. She's, she's she's strong. She ain't scared of Michael. Mm-hmm. Yeah, everything that she's done for the last forty years is like is it put herself in a position to like if he ever got out to like be prepared. Yeah, and like that's again why that to me and I think we've, we've talked about it just personally like I think that's all our our second after the original our second favorite Halloween film yeah. is probably that yeah. one. Um, this one though, Todd. Let's get let's get back on track with H two O. So I'll let you kind of take it from here. Tell us how uh, you know we're we're getting the cat and mouse game with Lori. Uh, you know, she's hunting Michael. So tell us how H two O ends from here. So they get back into the school. Uh, they have some skirmishes. She's kind of hiding out underneath some tables from him. He's trying to try to find her. Uh, they work their way back upstairs, and she kind of stabs him. He falls from the balcony onto a table. Uh, he's been stabbed. He's laying there motionless. You know, we're assuming he's dead, but mm-hmm. we know better. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Lori ain't convinced. No, no, no. Because when the ambulance and the police show up to haul the body out, she uh, pulls a cop's gun like, hey, 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 hey. <laughs> steals the ambulance, drives off with Michael in the back in the body bag. As soon as he gets up out of that body bag, she slams the brakes, throws him out the front windshield. As soon as he stands up to his feet, she guns the gas, just plows into him. They both grow over the hill. I think she gets uh, thrown free. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or, uh, she no. just pops right out. She just pops yeah. right out, yeah. Uh, he gets pinned between the ambulance and a tree. He's just, he's there. Uh, of course, she finds her old trusty axe. Yeah. Uh, walks over to him. They have a little tender moment, uh, and then she just lops his head right off. That pulled out my heartstrings a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just relieved that Michael Myers was finally stopped for good, right, Todd? He is dead and gone for good. Right, Lexi. <laughs> right. There's no possible way in the no next way. follow-up film that he could possibly come back from being ha- decapitated. How you come back from they having They finally killed the boogeyman. Yeah. 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 <laughs> definitely no way in Halloween Resurrection they retconned <laughs> the ending of this film and had him come back. No way. He's definitely dead. He's oh, for sure. Gone. <laughs> So uh, I want to talk just a minute about the production crew on this film, okay? So Halloween H2O was directed by Steve Miner, who you might know from his other directorial efforts, such as Friday the 13th Part 2, Friday the 13th Part 3, in 3D. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, Forever Young, uh, it's a film about Mel Gibson aging like a banana. No. Uh, uh, My Father the Hero, uh, a film where uh, teenage Catherine Heigl pretends that she... uh, has to date her own father. Oh, whoa! With uh, Gerard Depardieu. <laughs> you <laughs> you remember Gerard Depardieu? I remember that too. guy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and Lake Placid, an admittedly a guilty pleasure film of mine. I actually enjoy Lake Placid. I think there's another uh, uh, kind of uh, alligator crocodile movie called Rogue, which is uh, is like the jaws of uh, crocodile movies or alligator movies. Lake Placid is like number two on my list of those. I love Friday the Thirteenth Part Three, but a lot of people don't. Yeah, like a that lot one. of people don't care for that. One. That's the first one where Jason actually gets his uh, hockey mask. mask. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Friday the Thirteenth Part Two is actually underrated in my opinion. Very. It's actually uh, one of the stronger ones. But anyway. So the story was written by a guy named Robert Zappia. So if you're wondering what he wrote before writing Halloween H2O, well, he wrote for Home Improvement, which we all know is a TV comedy about how a family struggles to deal with uh, the father of the house only being able to communicate through grunts after he took too much cocaine. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Uh, A show called Thunder Alley, which is a TV comedy where Ed Asner has sex with cards or something. I don't know how to look it up. Car, you say? He runs a garage or a body shop or something. Oh, okay. He has sex with, I don't know. Strange I didn't look type it up. shit. I thought I would remember a show where a guy fucks cars. Yeah, especially <laughs> Ed Asner, right? Yeah. R.I.P. Uh, L.A. Firefighters, which uh, it was a TV drama about uh, firefighters because there wasn't enough of those in the 90s. Uh, and uh, maybe that credit, again, that was his credits before writing this film. That's what he worked on. So maybe that's why this film is a toothless pile of garbage. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> uh, so uh, let's let's go into the behind the scenes. So uh, there's a lot of like this this film went through a bunch of iterations. So there was they were pitching around the seventh Halloween film. Uh, a guy named Daniel uh, Ferrans. He was doing uh, pre production of Halloween: The Curse of Michael Myers, Halloween Six. His second treatment for that become um, a treatment uh, for this film called Michael Myers, Lord of the Dead. That was going around. It would have, uh, the story would have started immediately after the events of the previous film and it would involve, um, uh, let's see, uh, who was it? Uh, da, 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 da. Tommy Doyle discovering that the entire town of Haddonfield was involved in a conspiracy to control Michael Myers. Some of that Thorn stuff, right? 
Uh, another idea pitched after Friends treatment was Halloween 7, Two Faces of Evil, written by uh, Robert Zappi, as we talked about. It was originally intended to be a direct-to-video film. It would involve Michael Myers stalking an all-woman's boarding school, wow. or women's boarding school. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> uh, the plot uh, eventually also revealed a copycat killer in the film. Uh, so Adam uh, Han Bird that we talked about before, who played Charlie, he stated uh, at one point the idea was for him to be re- uh, revealed as the copycat killer in Halloween H2O, but that was a scrapped idea that they had that they didn't end up going with. Um, the pitch itself was changed a couple of times, changing the title from Halloween Blood Ties as they involved Lori Strode into the storyline before scraping, uh, or scrapping, I should say, the idea entirely. So the, the bottom line here, what I'm getting at is a bunch of hack writers and at least one uh, semi-talented writer, I would say, Kevin Williamson, who uh, wrote Scream, right. Lexi's favorite. Uh, took a shot at writing the story for the seventh Halloween. It went around for years, a bunch of hack writers made treatments of it. And it was something, obviously, it's a moneymaker, you know, for the Akkad family who produces them. So it was never going to go away. So it was just around for years. Uh, Jamie Lee Curtis originally wanted John Carpenter to direct and uh, Deborah Hill, the original producer, to come back to produce. Uh, Carpenter agreed to direct the film for $10 million and a three-picture deal. But the producers of the film, Sex Pest Harvey Weinstein, <laughs> and uh, his brother and uh, Sex Pest enabler Bob Weinstein, uh, declined uh, Carpenter's deal. So, uh, obviously, he didn't come back to direct the film. Uh, in an interview, Josh Hartnett actually stated that his agent told him they wanted him for a Halloween 7. And Hartnett said, quote, I wasn't sure I wanted to do that because I didn't know, you know, Halloween 7, was that going to go straight to video or go straight to hell? <laughs> it was the latter, Josh. It was the latter. Um, some other more stuff I had here. John Carpenter spoke about how the filmmakers for H2O had to grapple with the idea of Michael being Lloyd's brother. John Carpenter admitted that when it came time to make Halloween 2, it was he was out of ideas. So one night, late night, six pack of beer and a typewriter, he said he decided to make Michael Lloyd's brother. I understand why he did it at the time, but it's an idea that I personally don't care for. Todd, what about you, brother or no brother? How do you come down on that subject? I've never cared for it either. And you didn't really need it in Halloween, too. I mean, it picked up right after the original ended. And, you know, he's making his way around. He goes into the other Making my way down. Sorry. (laughs) (laughs) But, you know, there's a part where he kind of goes downtown, and that kid walks by with the radio, and he hears about, you know, I think Lori being taken to the hospital or one of the victims being taken to the hospital. So he could have knew she was there without all that other stuff. Yeah, or, I mean, even he just ends up there just because yeah. he's Michael and maybe he goes there. Maybe he's smart enough to, like, go. Maybe he's – obviously, he was shot six times <laughs> uh, at the end of the first one. Maybe he goes and, like, tries to go to the hospital and patch himself up or something. But, yeah, I, again, I understand why he did it. He was out of ideas. He admitted it. He just – to make the movie, he had to have a reason for Michael to continue to go after Lori because, obviously, they wanted to bring Jamie Lee back. So, and they're brothers, sisters. So, it's not what about you, time. though, Lexi? Uh, brother or no brother? Where do you come down on that? Mm, brother. Wow. Oh. Yeah. Oh, okay. Why brother? Um, I don't know. I just prefer that sibling type thing. Him having a reason to, like, yeah. want to, like, I guess, end his own bloodline or something, right. or make sure no one survived the Michael, uh, the yeah. Myers family. Yeah. Okay. Fair. Like I said. Me personally, not big on the brother angle. I, that's one thing I give Halloween uh, 2018 credit for is just ignoring all the other films after the original. I think that's, to me, that's the smart decision. Um, there was also some issues with the music of the film. So in, in addition to everything else going on. So a guy named John Ottman did the score for this film. So director Steve Miner, he wanted a, a, Hitch, a Hitchcock kind of approach to the music. So John Ottman, he delivers the final score, and it was felt that the score sounded like it was for a different film entirely. Uh, the production team, they flew in Marco Beltrami in to redo as much of the music as they could in the five-day window that they had to do it. So the, uh, the final kind of cue of the film is taken from a CD that included John Carpenter's original Halloween theme because they didn't have a version. That was the only version that they had, and Beltrami wasn't able to kind of do another version or replicate the sound that those old, uh, the older synthesizers had at the time. So they actually, that last where uh, uh, Lori chops Michael's head off and you hear the Halloween, the original Carpenter's theme hit, mm-hmm. it's, it's ripped from a CD. Wow. 
Wow. wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Uh, they actually had to remove 17 frames from the last shot of Jamie Lee Curtis just kind of standing there to make it sync up to John Carpenter's original track. Oh, wow. <laughs> So last note I had, and this this kind of ties into some of the things that went on uh, behind the scenes. So I mentioned it earlier. So uh, I want to know how you guys felt about how Michael Myers looked. I think he looks like ass. <laughs> but uh, Todd, what do you think? How do you think he looks? I would agree. I mean, it's uh, first of all, I don't think whoever was that portrayed him I did a good job of capturing the mannerisms. And, you know, that's been a difficult thing off and on in this series. But the mask was just all over the place. There's that one scene where it's hot, like a hot garbage CGI shot. Mm -hmm. There's uh, distant shots where it looks like white paper mache. Mm -hmm. uh, there's, you know, the I think it was a Stan Winston for ones for close-ups that's yep. passable at best. Yeah, there was a, <laughs> I think the, they shot originally with, uh, they call it the K&B mask. There's a, there's a great uh, documentary called, uh, I think Halloween H2O, Blood is Thicker Than Water. Uh, where they talk about the mask that they use. They they use like the, a company like a K&B mask, which is the director wanted it to be like ghost-like. They called it the Casper the Friendly Ghost mask because it was featureless and looked very ghost-like. And it can be seen in some faraway shots, I think they say. Mm -hmm. And then that didn't work, so I think they had a shot or two with the Halloween 6 mask. And then they... Uh, brought in Stan Winston to do a version of the match, which I think is the, the mask that you see in the close-ups, you said, right? Where, like, you know, the kind of at the door and those kind of things. And, like, so, like, they went through a myriad of, like, different masks because that's one of the problems with this film was there was too many cooks in the kitchen. Like, there was everybody had a different opinion. The director wanted this. The producers wanted it this way. You know, uh, all kinds of stuff like that. But, Lexi, what do you what did you think about how he looked in the film? He looked Apparently. awful. He looked like a damn freak. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> the hair. Yeah, that hair was just He looked much. like beans from even Stevens. I don't know if, that, <laughs> if you guys know what I'm talking about. But, like, yeah, like, his hair looked like he stuck his finger in a light socket sometimes. Like, <laughs> Yeah, like a doc, he looked like Doc Brown from Back to the Future. Like it's just, <laughs> like I don't know. He he, I think he had the decent build, but like Todd said, the mannerisms weren't right. Mm -hmm. The mask was off. Like the mask was awful, and it got even worse in Resurrection. Like I don't know if you guys have seen that movie in a while, but I looked at some clips of it, and like that's where like I guess the mask where Michael got his eyebrows done because they're like drawn in. <laughs> um, but like it's just it's just a bad look, and it just doesn't fit. Among the other, there's, there's, that's a problem with some of the other Halloween sequels. Halloween 4, I always felt that guy was too small and the mask was a little too clean. Mm -hmm. Like, that was another problem with this movie. The mask is a little too clean. Christ Almighty, it's been 20 years. If it's the same mask, it's not going to look that good. And if it's a new mask, okay, but like, it needs a little bit more texture to it. Mm -hmm. Another thing that I think 2018 Halloween oh, gets yeah. right is the mask, yeah. the original mask. It's grimy, it's dirty, it's used, it's original, it's old, all that kind of stuff. You know, but a, a problem, like I was saying, with the sequels, five, he's too big. I had to cut the mask and put him on him. That's been a problem throughout this entire film series is getting the look of Michael Myers right and the actor to portray those mannerisms. And it just, it, this film misses it completely, in my opinion. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, why couldn't you at some point maybe just like, Hey, William Shatner, come on down. Let me give you a little bit of money. You sit here. We're going to take a mold of your face. <laughs> Granted, he's a little older right. now. <laughs> but, you know, why wouldn't you? Why I mean, you? something. I mean, none of the masks, like I said, in that documentary that I looked at, none of the masks looked good. Like, it was just, I don't know. I don't, again, there was too many people with too many opinions. There was not a clear, concise person to steer the ship that had enough either experience or, or, you know, backbone to say, no, this is what we're going to do for everything from the music to the decisions that were made. There was an idea bandied about uh, during uh, the filming where they originally wanted Michael Myers to pick up the gun that we'll use to shoot Ronnie and he, to him to use the gun. And that was something uh, that Mustafa Akkad, the producer, um, the oldest producer of uh, Halloween, he stepped in, thank God, and said, no, Michael, you can't have him use a gun. There's actually a part in the documentary where they talked about they tricked him during filming, the part where Michael is stalking Lori on the tables. Uh, the, the guy playing Michael, he, like, drops the knife and pulls a gun out. And he literally, the producer's like, you got me. You got me. <laughs> but that was literally an idea somebody had on this film. was like, we want Michael Myers to pick up the gun and come after Lori with a gun. Right. So that just tells you the brain trust that was working on this film. Mm. So. Shitty. 
Yeah. So uh, let's go on. Any final thoughts? Uh, review scores. Uh, again, we rank films on a one to ten scale, starting from one. The ranks are torture. Two is awful. Three is bad. Four is subpar. Five is mediocre. Six is decent. Seven is good. Eight is great. Nine is amazing. Ten is a masterpiece. Todd, give us final thoughts and your review uh, score for Halloween H two O. You know, I th- I think that uh, this movie had some good intentions. It had some good ideas. Uh, I like the. Uh, Lori faking her own death, uh, taking on a new identity, uh, you know, the trying something other than Haddonfield, you know, going out to California, private school, confined space, confined area. But I think this is one of the two, this and Halloween 3 is the only two Halloween films not set in Haddonfield. But uh, the big thing is, is when you don't get Michael Myers right, you have pretty much shit the bed before you started. Uh, that's why I give this movie a score of five, which on our scale is mediocre. And maybe that's a little bit too high, but I tend to, you know, go a little easy on my slashers because I love them. <laughs> right. but, uh, there's some good concepts here, but it's just poor execution. Gotcha. Lexi, give us your final thoughts and uh, review score for Halloween H2O. Uh, this movie is it's okay. Um, it's not one of my favorites. Uh, it's not one that I would sit down and be like, oh, I want to watch Halloween H2O. Mm-hmm. Um, there's not a lot of kills. I wish there was a lot more. Um, that being said, I will give this a four out of 10, which is a subpar. Okay. Uh, so for me, Halloween H2 is just, it's a nothing burger. It's, <laughs> uh, it's too many cooks in the kitchen, uh, led this film to have no style, no substance. Uh, and it was scared to kind of take any risks. Uh, it's an underwhelming finale to the 1978 original and the 1981 sequel. So for me, I give Halloween H20 a four out of 10, which ranks it as subpar. So, Todd, tell everyone how they could find us and stay up to date with us on social media. Uh, we are at Tail Capes on YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram. Tail Capes Podcast on Facebook. You can also email us at tailcapespod at gmail.com. Uh, also, if you're so obliged, leaving us a five-star review on your podcast app of choice really helps the show. Popcorn Mumbles will return next week. We want to thank you so much for listening. Until next time, bye, guys. See ya. Bye, y'all. <laughs>